and welcome to our next video installment of our weekly series. Today we're going to highlight a few of things in my collection like we did a couple weeks ago with the, uh, the German or the Austrian Luftwaffe carbine. Today we're going to be covering some of the Japanese stuff I have in my collection. Uh, have it all sort of arrayed out here and we'll just go over piece by piece. Starting up here at the front, um, I've got a couple of the bayonets for the Arasaka rifle series. Uh, this is an earlier one with the, the hooked quillion. Uh, still has the leather frog, although there is some deterioration here. The strap is missing to, to keep the frog and the sheath together. Uh, overall, pretty decent shape, bright finished blade. This one here is a, a later issue uh, towards the end of the war. They became a little more stingy in their metalwork and the materials that they were using. Interesting story about this particular bayonet is this actually was given to me by a uh, retired Marine officer who captured this in Vietnam, of all things. So, of course, the Japanese were in Vietnam considerably large quantities during World War II. And uh, stands to reason that there was stuff floating around even into the late 60s still. Probably still is to this day floating around. Um, just thought it was kind of interesting that he actually captured this in Vietnam, brought it home with him uh, in the end of the 60s, and he since given it to me. Moving over here to my right, uh, we have a, sort of a typical good luck flag. Um, a lot of these came back as souvenirs from uh, Marines and GIs. Generally, the individual Japanese soldier would get signatures on the flag extolling the virtues of the Japanese military and <clears throat> wishing him good luck in his, in his endeavors against the uh, Yankee imperialists. So you can see this one has some damage. Um, whether or not that damage was caused during the war or post-war, I don't know. There's no real associated blood stains with it, which you will see on these occasionally. So probably is damage done after the fact. There is some staining on it, but that's mostly water stains, I believe. Um, have had it somewhat translated uh, by a native Japanese speaker. She indicated that it was essentially, like I said, just signatures and well wishes from the individual soldiers, town, prefecture, uh, as they call them over there. So anyway, it's kind of interesting. Moving on, get this out of the way here. So for a rifle, we have a Type 99, which is the later of the two that are most commonly used during the war. You have the Type 38 and the Type 99s that were variations, the carbines paratrooper rifles and some things that clearly I wish I had but I don't. <laughs> um, Type 99 uh, featured a, a monopod that folded down. Uh, also characteristic of this rifle is a rear sight that has what they call anti-aircraft wings that would fold out. These were for leading an aircraft and if you were firing an aircraft on the ground applying the leads to uh, ensure that you had a better chance of hitting said aircraft. Uh, this rifle does have the mum intact, which of course is, is one of the things that the collectors look for. The chrysanthemum, which is the royal seal. A lot of these were ground off uh, after the war and then came home en masse. This one, uh, more likely, was a bring back from pre-end of war because it hasn't been touched. Also has the dust cover on it, which again is fairly unusual. A lot of times these were just discarded because they do rattle quite a bit. Not something you wanted if you're sneaking around in the jungle, kind of deal. Just a good overall representation of the of the uh, the series of rifle. We have a Japanese NCO sword. Again, bring back um, these swords were mass produced. These were machine made swords, not hand forged. And essentially, they were issued to NCOs, non commissioned officers, if they did not have a family sword that they were bringing with them into service. So, although the handle looks similar to the handmade swords with the wrap over the shark or ray skin, it's actually just cast in one piece, which is kind of unique. You know, it has the chrysanthemums and the, the Japanese military symbols. Um, nothing fancy, again, not hand forged, so the blades are all machine made. They're, these aren't terribly uncommon, although they have been getting higher value as the years go by, because obviously they're not making any more of them. Um, but just a simple sword, you know, lots of these came home, these were probably the most commonplace, obviously samurai type swords to be brought home after the war. And then lastly we have a 
Type 14 Nambu pistol, fired 8mm Nambu. Um, got an oddball design, not terribly efficient, not a great combat pistol, but that's what they had. So a lot of these again came home. This one not be faced either. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have a holster to go with it. And the holsters in their own right are almost as expensive as the guns anymore, it seems like. Yeah, but overall, decent shape. It hasn't been re -blued. It's uh, in original condition. A lot of times you'll find these are really pitted and rusted out. Obviously, if they were carried in a jungle-type environment and not maintained well, it would be detriment to their condition. So anyway, just a little quick video to show you some of the stuff we have in here. I usually have some of this off, uh, on display with uh, my Marine Corps World War II memorabilia. And occasionally there's some photos of it on the website. Uh, some of the stuff out and about. So anyway, thanks for stopping by and we'll see you next week and have a great day.